So if you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, you'll know that this isn't my first shed project. Happy as I am with how the bike shed turned out, I did make some tweaks from things I learned from that build. The first is building a stronger foundation, which I made out of concrete. Now all you've seen me do so far is build the forms for the concrete platform. The intention is to have the form stay on permanently, so I put my stakes on the inside of where I'd be adding the concrete. I also leveled the frame so it was facing slightly away from the house, so any water that landed on the platform would run away from the house. The concrete will run out of here unless I block this off, so I've just got some plywood, uh, tree plywood that is, and I'm going to put these strips on the inside, just buried in here, just as kind of dams along the front corner, just to, yeah, just to keep everything in here. This is my first time working with concrete, so if you have any tips or tricks on maybe what I should have done differently, feel free to leave those in the comments below so others can learn from maybe my mistakes. My understanding is concrete should be mixed to a consistency roughly of pancake batter. Now I'm not sure if that means a crepe, a buttermilk pancake, or a flapjack. But what I do know is that concrete is hazardous to your health and at the second bag, I realized I should have been wearing gloves the whole time. And probably a respirator. Ugh. I really don't know if I should have added rebar into the foundation. My thought was because it wasn't supporting very much weight, it probably didn't need it. My only thought now looking back on this video is that maybe I did need it just to prevent cracking in the future. It took five and a half bags of concrete less the half that fell on the ground to fill my form. And I just did my best to screed the top just to make it level. All right, next day, and I've made some slight tweaks to the design. So basically how the design is gonna change is the roof is actually gonna hinge open with the idea that you can grab a handle open it up and then drop in whatever garbage. My next steps are to cut my two by four material for the front and back supports. And then I'll put in the cross supports on the side and the front just to help stabilize everything. Now this was filmed during the great treated wood shortage of 2020. So all I could get for materials were these giant 16 foot two by fours. After rough cutting everything with a skill saw, I brought them over to the miter saw station in more manageable pieces to cut down all the pieces required for my frame. Like I said earlier, I slanted my slab slightly away from the house so the drainage would pour away from the foundation. So to counter that so my shed wasn't sitting on an angle, I used a level along the way just to make sure all my posts were sitting up straight. For all the cross supports, it made the most sense to me to go with pocket holes. This is just an inexpensive Craig R3, which you can easily find online. Uh, I've also added a link to the description if you want to check this tool out. So even though this is a garbage shed, I still want to make sure that everything was square. So I'm putting a cross brace across the back at 20 inches. So the top of the two by four will sit at 20 inches. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want the garbage can to go too far back. Uh, and it'll, it'll just be like a backstop basically for that. With the frame built, I could batch out all my outside panels. Okay, so I made this super easy drilling jig for all of the panels for the outside. Uh, the jig just basically clicks on the end of the board and then from this side, I can drill the holes on both sides, spin it around, and do my bottom holes as well. So uh, it takes no time to make stuff like this, but the overall impact on the finished product, having everything simply, uh, I guess, with all your screws in place and everything lined up, is a dream. I also cut more or less a story stick. This is just over a half an inch, just so when I'm laying down my, so I'm laying down my rows of boards. 
it just lines everything up in the right spot. My go-to screws for projects like this are just simple GRK deck screws. As always, I really appreciate you watching this video. If you haven't subscribed already, I'd love to see you hit that subscribe button. It just really helps me out in the growth of this channel. Alright, I'm not going to lie, I really wish I would have done miters on these corners. However, I figured out we'll say a cheat or a workaround. And I've strategically cut all of the end cap pieces for this side. So all you're going to see is the end grain that has the uh, treated finish on it. Um, so all those will go like that. And I'm just going to brad nail and glue those in place. Uh, then I can do the final top rail across the front and start working on the roof. The top front rail is a full length piece and I use that same spacer block just to make sure that it lined up with everything else. I can now move on to building the roof. The roof does have a 5 degree pitch, so I set my cross cut sled to 5 degrees and set up a stop block so I could cut all my pieces at once. After some Ueda foot clamping, I called my daughter out to help level out, or what I thought would level out, the roof, as my boards were slightly twisted. The hinge mechanism for the roof is super simple. I literally just got some outdoor grade hinges and attached them to the back half of the shed. Now I designed this so the pitch of the roof did face towards the house, but let me explain three reasons why this isn't the end of the world. We're super close to our neighbor. Hi, hi David. The shed barely peeks out from underneath the roof. And finally, the last thing I'm going to point out is the fact that our weeping tile and our drainage, even from our eaves, goes behind the shed and then down into the sub pump. So, I think we're okay. The corrugated roofing I did cut on the table saw, which probably was a bad idea. It was chipping out the whole way. If you know a better way to cut this, I'd love to know what that is. With my corrugated roofing screwed down, I added a handle to the top side of, I mean, the bottom side of the lid. All right, starting to rain here, so sorry about the awkward angle. Um, I'm just trying to figure out the taper, the slope of the roof. So to the top of my final board, to the bottom of the last board is about six inches. And at the back for the same measurement, uh, I'm about five inches. So what I want to do to keep that half inch gap the same is I just want to measure down a half an inch so the taper on the board is going to go from zero to four and a half inches and I'll just cut that with the track saw. I was actually just under four and a half inches and the reason for that was my material wasn't exactly five and a half inches. And with those pieces in place, this shed was done. I've always had this fear of being the dirt neighbors. Those who have too much trash out front of their house, because of course we're not storing ours in the garage. But I love the curb appeal that this adds to the side of our house. The lid works better than I expected, and I know this is going to be a huge help in the winter when there's two feet of snow in front of the shed. This shed was also a great excuse for Aaron to do some landscaping across this side of the house. Thanks for liking and sharing this video. If you want to check out another one of my outdoor projects, I've queued it up right here for you. We'll see you guys on the next build.